Good evening and welcome everyone. I am Jatin Verma, one of the educators on Ann Academy for UPSC Civil Services category. So guys, today we are meeting here to discuss United Nations Security Council reforms and the process of election of 10 non-permanent members for United Nations General Assembly. As we, many of us must be knowing that United Nations has got five permanent members. United Nations Security Council has got five permanent members and 10 non-permanent members. So we today are, as the world is changing, we need to reform these international organizations like United Nations, World Bank, WTO, IMF in order to reflect the contemporary realities of this world. Otherwise, new institutions would be set up like in the banking arena, we have set up Asian Infrastructure and Investment Bank, New Development Bank has been set up by Asian countries like India and China. So in order to reflect the changing dynamics of population of GDP contribution towards the world GDP, we need to change these organizations. Global governance order needs to change. So it is in this light that we are uh, going to discuss this topic. The discussion of this topic will help you in your prelims preparation as well as your mains preparation. We all know what are the five permanent members of your United Nations Security Council. So let's get started. This is the agenda for the session today about United Nations Security Council, then election of non-permanent members. Has United Nations Security Council ever been reformed in the past? Has it been reformed? 1965 was the time. We will discuss that also. And what is the context in which reforms are being demanded today? Changed dynamics of the world order is the reason. We are going to discuss that as well. Then another set of reasons is there. Another uh, you know agenda is there for this class. Misuse of the veto power. What is veto power? I'll explain you in brief in this session. Challenges in the way of reforms. Why India should be a permanent member? Steps taken by India towards reforming this organization. About United Nations Security Council. United Nations Security Council was established by 51 countries in 1945 in the aftermath of Second World War to bring about peace and stability in the world, in the governance of the world. Now today the Security Council as we call it Sometimes the United Nations Security Council is in news because of sanctions that it imposes on countries like North Korea, then on countries like Syria, sometimes they are in news. Now today Security Council comprises five permanent members. China, these are called P5, permanent five members of United Nations Security Council. China, France, Russia, United Kingdoms and United States of America. So these are known as P5 grouping of countries. Now there are other names, other groupings also G5, G7, uh, G77. We are going to talk about those groupings also. Now all of them have the power to veto any resolution. Veto means if a proposal is brought about by any of these countries, if a proposal is brought about by USA, or uh, if a proposal is brought about by Russia and all the four members, Russia, USA, UK and France are in favor of the proposal, but China is saying no to it. China is this way exercising the veto. That means the power of all the four countries would be nullified. The assent or the consent of all these four countries would be zero, would be uh, having a value of zero if any one of the members of Permanent Five Security Council members says no to any resolution or proposal brought before United Nations Security Council. So this veto power today is being misused by countries like China and USA to some extent. Security Council resolutions are brought about to impose sanctions or to take steps like deployment of United Nations peacekeeping force in any uh, region or any country which is facing some trouble, which is facing some law and order problem or some international crisis has happened. In that scenario, United Nations Security Council takes the decision in the form of resolutions. These resolutions have to be adopted, have to be assented to by 
all the five permanent members. If they do not, then this, this effect would be nullified. If any one of the five members says no to a proposal, that means proposal would be zeroed out, right? Proposal would lose its value. Now, council, apart from these permanent five members, also has got 10 non-permanent members. 10 non-permanent members of UNSC. The council also has 10 non-permanent members. So, we will study these 10 non-permanent members keep on changing. How they change, how the election happens, we are going to discuss that also. Each of them serves a two-year non-consecutive term. That means each of the 10 non-permanent members would serve a term of two years and they cannot be re-elected again consecutively for another two years. There has to be a, there has to be a gap. If, suppose if India gets elected to uh, one of the slots, India gets elected as one of the non-permanent members of United Nations Security Council out of the 10 members for two years, let's say 2017 to 19. Then India cannot contest again for 19 to 21 for the next year's contest. There has to be a gap, right? So, it is not possible to be re-elected immediately after holding a seat in Security Council. Subsidiary organs of United Nations that support the Council's mission include ad hoc committees on sanctions. For example, 1267 committee or other committees are there. You must have heard of 1267 committee or other committees. They are the ad hoc. They are the temporary committees to implement the decisions taken by UNSC. P5 plus 10 non-permanent members. Then, committee on counter-terrorism, then nuclear, biological and chemical weapons. So, there are organizations like United Nations Office on Drug Control, uh, United Nations Office on Drug and Crime. Then there is IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency. These are the subsidiary organs which implement the decisions taken at this level. At this level. So, this is to implement the decisions, right? Now, United Nations Security Council permanent members, I have told you, as of today, these are the 10 non-permanent members. Africa, Asia, Latin America, West, uh, Western Europe and others, then Eastern Europe. Okay, this is how the distribution of seats happens. Okay, so non-permanent members would be elected for a term of two years from three members have to be from Africa, two members have to be from Asia, so as to equally distribute the, geographically equally distribute the composition of seats. If there are 10 seats, this is how they have to be distributed. Latin America will get two members out of non-permanent members. Western Europe and others will get another two. Eastern Europe will get one. So, this non-distribution of non-permanent members is also not equal. As you see here, Western Europe will get two members. Asia as a whole is getting two members only. Eastern Europe will get one member. So that means Western Europe is getting three members because of its size, no doubt. But if we consider the fact that France and UK are already two members in the permanent council, United Nations Security Council permanent members, why to give another three seats to uh, this, uh, this uh, continent Europe in the non-permanent members? Now, the Security Council has a primary responsibility within the United Nations of maintaining international peace and security. It is the only United Nations organ that has the power to make decisions that member states are obligated to implement. It is the only authority. Suppose if International Atomic Energy Agency says that India should not be given nuclear uh, raw material, uranium-235. But if this decision is overruled by UNSC, then five members, they say that India can be given uh, U-235 or anything else, then India would be eligible to get that. So, this is the power of United Nations Security Council. All the bodies, UNESCO, etc., the decisions that they take 
could be overruled by UNSC, United Nations Security Council. Then election of non-permanent members. How does the election of non-permanent members takes place? Non-permanent members are elected by a two-thirds vote of United Nations General Assembly. Now UNGA, it consists of all the member countries of United Nations. Two-thirds of these members, if they vote in favor of India for the Asian seat that we were talking about, for the Asian seat, if they vote in favor of India, then India would get elected. Two-thirds of the members if they vote, right? So the main criterion for eligibility is contribution to the maintenance of international peace and security. This is the theoretical reason. Actual reason is having the support base among these countries, the member countries of United Nations Security Council. If the member countries of UN, uh, United Nations General Assembly are in favor of India, if India is maintaining good relations with these countries, then India would definitely be able to win the election. At times in the past, it has been observed that there is a tough competition, but uh, because of the India's good relationship with group of 77 least developing country, least developed countries and developing countries, India has been able to secure the position whenever India fought the election. Now, this is uh, to maintain the, often this is defined by financial or troop contributions, military contributions to United Nations peacekeeping operations. United Nations peacekeeping forces are deployed in countries like Sudan or sometimes countries like uh, your Houthi rebels are operating in countries, right? So, Somalia, etc. So, you, these, uh, whenever some uh, earthquake strikes the countries like Nepal or whenever Mexico is in trouble, like Haiti is in trouble. So UN peacekeeping forces are deployed. If India or any other country contributes to the army deployment under UN peacekeeping missions, then this adds value to India's stature. When, it, when India fights the election for UNSC non-permanent seat, this deployment of troops and contribution towards the financial budget of United Nations adds this contributes towards the election. Now, uh, this is the structure. First of all, this is General Assembly. The United Nations power dynamic is this way. Security Council has got five permanent members with power to veto any decision taken by rest of the 14. Any one member out of 10 non-permanent members, out of the decisions taken by these 10 non-permanent and four permanent if one of the members says that he is dissenting, that country is going to dissent, then the decision taken by remaining 14 would be nullified. This decision would have no value. Security Council, final authority on the issue of peace and security. United Nations Security Council has got final authority on the issues of peace and security. All the members of United Nations must accept the authority of the decisions made by Security Council. Effectively, five members. So if I ask you a question, is it sufficient in today's world order that these five countries, UK, France, China, USA, Russia, these countries exercising enormous say, enormous power today. Is it, is it, is it justified? especially when India is a member of groupings like G20, especially when India is the fastest growing economy. And moreover, when India is going to become the a country with largest population in the world. So, so many uh, things are there that have changed since 1941. But more or less, the power distribution, the power dynamic between the United Nations has remained the same. Today, it is not reflecting the contemporary realities. So that is why the demand, the chorus for change is rising, right? So now Secretary General is the servant of the member states. Secretary General is like servant of the member states, General Assembly member states. Now he makes the recommendations to General Assembly and to Security Council. Basically, United Nations 
secretary general is like a secretary is like the agenda setter he sets the agenda he basically proposes the items to be put on the agenda before united nations general assembly meeting currently elected by the security council this a person is elected by the security council which puts forward only one candidate for the ga to approve election happens in this way so secretary general is to be elected so unsc will propose one of the names before united nations general assembly so this choice of united nations security council will be put before unga to vote upon so this is again not so fair method of electing the secretary general now has the unsc ever been reformed unsc has been reformed once in 1965 when the number of non permanent members was increased from 6 to 10 this was just like pacifying the member countries this was like they were trying to pacify they were trying to placate the angry members of a united nations general assembly who were seeking reform in 1965 itself voices were being raised about the unequal distribution of power to the security council five permanent members so these five permanent members they got disproportionate power since 1965 the voices have been raised by countries like india germany south africa and other countries that and countries from south america as well brazil that this is not reflective of contemporary world order then need for reform why do we need to reform unsc fundamental reason i have given you that contemporary world order it has changed a lot so the world is changing but not the united nations security council it still reflects the geopolitical architecture of second world war post second world war era and a lot of developments have taken place since then these development requires they these development require reforms in the formation and composition of united nations security council otherwise united nations security council would lose would lose its standing its sanctions its decisions may not be implemented by the countries the countries would be uh, not be having the moral force security council would be losing the moral force now changed dynamics global population has increased three folds since the creation of unsc today the population is around 7 billion now the since the last reforms 1965 the membership of united nations has increased from 113 to 193 without any change in the composition of unsc so this is another reason the uh, extra 80 countries that have been added there is no permanent member in the unsc from these 80 countries as well is it justified so that is another reason now the security council is not representative of the geopolitical realities of the modern world these are the points that you can write in your exam as well this would be the main heading and these are going to be the sub headings under this main heading this is your second main heading now need for reforms this is like introductory line and this could be your first point as well right so second world war archaic structure is there we need to reform this archaic structure here then coming to this uh, both africa and latin america lack a permanent seat a seat from africa from asia there is at least one member china but china is not that democratic china is not that acceptable to countries of asia be it india be it other countries as well so china has been asserting itself too much dragon etc these words have been used by, for china africa is not having any member in the five members latin america likewise is also not having any member so while europe is over represented as i told you if we include russia if we include eurasia into europe so there are three members uk and then your france and russia as well so this is over representation and this is under representation africa is not represented at all so transnational threats such as terrorism and cyber crime 
are straining national capacities. And this is the incapability of United Nations Security Council. If we ask another question that has United Nations Security Council been successful in tackling the global challenges? The answer would be no. If we see the state of uh, climate change negotiations, Paris deal, Paris deal is in tatters today. If we see the pollution level, okay, global warming, etc. UNSC has not been res responsive, has not been able to tackle problem of terrorism, problem of cyber crime. UNSC has not been able to do. And other blot on the record of UNSC is Palestine. UNSC or United Nations in general was a mute spectator to whatever was happening. If we add to this discussion, what happened in Iraq? UNSC could not do anything. UNSC rather was co-opted by UK and USA. So both these countries, UK under Tony Blair and USA under George W. Bush, they were running rampage. They were running roughshod over this institution. They did not listen. They rather imposed their viewpoint on United Nations and Iraq was converted into an other Vietnam. Likewise, what happened in Afghanistan? What did USA do in Afghanistan? Again, converting the country into ruins. Right. So, these are the failures of United Nations. Right. So, this is there. Now, coming here, uh, binding decisions. United Nations Security Council decisions, unlike the General Assembly decisions, these decisions of UNSC are binding on the member states. Now, the member states, they ask when UNSC is not reflective of their continent, is not able to tackle their problems, is not able to provide a solution to their problem, problems like IAS, IAS phenomena, why should we listen to it? Right? If necessary, it can encroach upon the sovereignty of nations. It has been observed in the past in the form of Iraq and Afghanistan that UNSC through its decisions, through the decisions made by permanent five countries has encroached upon the decisions of, has encroached upon the sovereignty of nations. Exercising this wide range of powers would only be right when a decision is taken with the involvement of all the major countries. And how would we define the major countries? Major countries could be defined in the form of populous countries, in the form of uh, countries acquiring uh, a share, acqu acquiring a substantial share of world GDP in the contemporary times. Countries having, uh, you know, trade with the world, that could be another criteria. And countries doing enough for the overall good and peaceful world order, like India. India has got credentials, Brazil, South Africa. Okay, these countries have not been troubling other countries. These countries have been contributing to things like international solar alliance, global peacekeeping, etc, etc. So this, this could be another criteria. So misuse of veto power is another reason because of which we should, uh, you know, reform this United Nations Security Council. The members of P5 have exercised the veto power to varying degrees. Many times this misuse of veto power has resulted in inaction in the face of mass atrocities. China was exercising veto power to protect Myanmar. Military junta in Myanmar was committing atrocities. So Myanmar has been safeguarding. My, uh, China has been safeguarding Myanmar for a long time. Then China was safeguarding North Korea in the recent past. right? And similarly, United Nations has been safe, uh, keeping the interests of Israel intact. It has been protecting Israel from the United Nations Security Council's sanctions. In 2017, China and Russia vetoed a resolution on Syria against President Bashar al-Assad, which would have sanctioned entities involved in the production of chemical weapons in the Syria, in the state of Syria. Now, if we are talking about Syria, United Nations was again a mute spectator, has been a mute spectator since 2011. Since 2011, uh, Syria has been on the boil. Syria has been at war with itself, but 
United Nations has not done anything about it. If we're talking about Syria, let's talk about Jasmine Revolution, Arab Spring. What were the conditions behind Arab Spring? Dictatorial rulers since three decades, four decades, these countries of North Africa were ruled by dictators and United Nations did not do anything to reform, to bring about democracy in the North African countries, right? Now, misuse of in 2018, United Nations, United States vetoed a resolution condemning Israel for Palestinian civilian deaths during the broader, during the border protest in Gaza. Likewise, China has been a frequent user of veto power to protect the terrorists in its friendly countries like Pakistan. China has been protecting the terrorists who have taken shelters, who, have, uh, who are using Pakistan as a safe haven for their activities. Okay, China has been protecting Pakistan against the sanctions. So, uh, sanctions against the terrorists like Masood Azhar, etc. hiding in this country, Pakistan. Right. And apart from this veto power, United States has been imposing its own unilateral sanctions. This is another problem. Okay. Despite having United Nations, USA has been imposing its own unilateral sanctions on countries like Iran. And again, UN has been a mute spectator. Just a mute spectator. Khada, okay, matlab dekhne ka kaam hai aur kuch nahi. It cannot stop the USA from doing these things, right? Now, transparency. There is a need for more transparency and coordination between Security Council and General Assembly and Economic and Social Committees. And the use of veto power must be regulated by some guidelines here, right? So, Sanctions Committee. Some of the countries suggested that including non-council members in the Sanctions Committee might not reduce might not only reduce the deliberative deficit deliberative means deliberations or discussions are not taking place okay so that is why including non council members in the committee which imposes the sanctions against some countries okay if we will include some non member non council members non council means members of permanent security council apart from the members of Permanent Security Council, we should also include the members of UNGA while taking any decision on sanctions. This will increase the deliberative quotient of deliberative consensus oriented decision making, acceptable decisions. Okay. And this, this will enhance the credibility and effectiveness of Security Council as well, which is on its wane, which is on the decline. Now, but also improve the implementation of sanctions regimes. So what are the challenges in the way of reforms? It will require an amendment to United Nations Charter. This amendment involves a two stage process. In the first stage, General Assembly, General Assembly must approve the reform by a two thirds majority. Right. In the second stage, amended charter of United Nations must then be approved by or ratified by at least two thirds of the members of two thirds of the members of United Nations General Assembly, including including the five permanent council members in accordance with national procedures. If this is not done in the immediate future, in the next two or three or four years, then United Nations General Assembly will find a regional replacement, right? Will find a replacement in the form of what we have seen in the form of a financial arena, in the form of the new development bank and then Asian infrastructure investment bank to finance the developmental projects by China, right? So this, this, these two banks have been, these two international institutions have been formulated under the, formed under the ages of China. These are at best regional institutions for financing to replace World Bank and Arch. Thus, it is a prime candidate. It is one of the most eligible candidates to become a permanent member of UNSC. More than 1 lakh troops have served in United Nations. 1 lakh Indian troops have served in United Nations missions. 
in the past 50 years. So that is why India should be a permanent member. These are the points which add to the credibility to the India's claim for candidature of reformed UNSC Permanent Security Council. Now world population percentage. So this is the percentage India's population in the world population is 18%. China is marginally above 18.5%. So that is why India deserves to be a permanent member. This is an other credibility point which favors India's candidature, right? Now, India has over 8,500 peacekeepers uh, uh, in the field. So that means India has contributed 8,500 soldiers, Indian soldiers towards UN peacekeeping mission. More than twice as many as UN's five big powers combined. So that means uh, this is more than twice. So all the permanent five members have contributed around 4,500 members, right? India has contributed around, they have contributed around 4,000. India has contributed around more than double. So by any objective criteria such as population, territorial size, GDP, you adopt any of these criteria, you would find that India is eligible. Civilizational legacy, cultural diversity, Responsible attitude. Respon India is considered as one of the most responsible countries. India has not taken animosity with any country. We have been benevolent towards our own adversarial neighbor. Right? India is eminently suited for permanent membership of expanded UNSC. Now, India's performance as non-permanent member has also significantly strengthened, has strengthened India's claim to permanent membership. India's bid for permanent membership has been supported by all of the Security Council's permanent members except China. So China being a veto holder, veto power, China has been obstructing India's proposal for reform of United Nations Security Council. The Charter of United Nations alongside the call for a geographically balanced distribution of seats also expressly states that countries that make considerable contributions to the UN should be members of Security Council. Charter of United Nations, the forming document, the foundational document is talking, saying so, right? Now, India needs to take the following steps to ensure a permanent place on the United Nations Security Council. Step 1. Hammer out a preliminary text on UN reform. So India needs to finalize a preliminary text and India should introduce it in the UNGA including SC expansion, Security Council expansion. The chair of UN Intergovernmental Negotiations on UN reform has put that document together. Russia, China and US have unsuccessfully objected to this document. As a step two, get a majority of General Assembly members of uh, General Assembly is of 193 members. We should try to gather their support to vote in favor of this document. This text, which will be full of contradictory opinions, should be put to vote later this month. AES vote lets the procedure go forward. Right. Then step three, negotiate a detailed UN reform document that then gets the two thirds of uh, UNGA members to endorse it. These negotiations could take years as a consensus has to be worked out among virtually all the UNSC members, all the UN members. Then candidate, candidates for UNSC seats win their regional votes. Countries from Asia, Africa and so on will have to vote for candidates for each of the new permanent seats. India will have to campaign on its own or possibly in alliance with Japan. So these are the five steps. Uh, fifth one being ratification by legislatures of two thirds of UNGA members. It's not that UN is a self-contained body. The decisions that are taken have to be approved by the parliaments of these member countries. At least two thirds of the member countries should get this proposal to reform United Nations approved through their legislative assemblies or parliaments. Uh, domestic parliaments, okay, to make all the reforms permanently written into UN Charter, 
टू थर्ड ऑफ दिस्लेचर ऑफ यू एन जी ए में मस्ट अप्रूव ऑफ दीज चेंजेस और रेटिफाई दीज चेंजेस नाउ स्टेप टेकन बाय इंडिया इंडिया अलॉन्ग विद अदर थ्री कंट्रीज टूगेदर दीज कंट्रीज आर कॉल्ड जी फोर इंक्लूडिंग इंडिया ब्राजील जपान एंड जर्मनी एंड इंडिया हैज प्रपोज एन एक्सपेंशन ऑफ मेंबरशिप ऑफ यू एन एस सी इन बोथ दी परमानेंट एंड नॉन परमानेंट कैटेगरीज इंडिया सपोर्ट्स एन एक्सटेंडेड सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव मेंबर्स अमंग देम सिक्स न्यू परमानेंट मेंबर्स जी फोर मेंबर्स एंड टू एफ्रीकन स्टेट्स एंड टू न्यूली एंड फोर न्यूली इलेक्टेड वंस राइट सो दिस इज देयर ना इंडिया इज पेयर हेडिंग अ ग्रुप ऑफ अराउंड फोर्टी टू डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज from asia africa and latin america called l69 group which has demanded urgent action on unsc reforms front so previous year question discuss the impediments india is facing in its pursuit of a permanent seat in united nations security council this question was asked in upsc 2015 now as india has put up the papers for 2021 uh not uh, this uh, non permanent membership 2020 to 2021 that is why this type of a question is expected again in the year 2020 either prelims or mains and that is why we were discussing that so to get more such articles and to find more such content to uh, prepare your polity and governance and to have a topic based understanding of articles news articles editorials that appear in the hindu or other newspapers you can find my course on unacademy plus with the name of dna plus daily news analysis plus right so while going for unacademy plus subscription you can use this code jatin verma 71 to get 10% discount on your unacademy subscription fee right so this was there these are the courses that are going to be launched by me in the month of november 2019 for your prelims 2020 preparation indian economy for upsc civil services exam prelims and mains indian polity and governance then current affairs round up 365 this course is a very popular course by me current affairs round up 365 by jatin verma there in this course here we cover things from both prelims as well as mains point of view and we try to revise and study all the current affairs uh, from january 2019 onwards we would be trying that we should not miss out on any news article which is factually and analytically important for prelims and mains respectively so this is it that was all guys thank you thanks for watching bye bye